The power of finding beauty in the humblest things makes home happy and life lovely. Jack and Jill, 1880. Welcome to Louisa May Alcott is My Passion, the podcast. I call you friend, though you lived long before me. It's your words, your wisdom shine through. For all of you who are endlessly fascinated with the life and works of Louisa May Alcott, this is your podcast. Here we gather as scholars, teachers, students, and fans to learn from each other, talk with each other, and celebrate our passion for the Alcotts. We'll read from Louisa's works, share the latest news, discuss her work and life with fascinating guests, and even hear from the old girl herself. Your voice will be very important for this podcast. Later on in the program, I will share with you how you can participate. And now, on with the show. Well, welcome to the premiere episode of Louisa May Alcott is My Passion, the podcast. I'm Susan Bailey, your host, and I run the Louisa May Alcott is My Passion website at louisamayalcottismypassion.com. I'm excited to bring this all to you. It couldn't have happened at a better time. What with the summer conversational series coming up in July at Louisa May Alcott's Orchard House. Registration is still open for that if you want to go, and I will give more details on how to sign up during this program. You can also find a link in the show notes. Today, we're going to talk with Lise Adams, Education Director at Orchard House, all about the Summer Conversational Series, how it came about, the subject of this year's theme, and details about the presenters. All this will be coming up shortly. I'll also catch you up on the latest news, and at the end of the podcast, present you with a wonderful surprise. Let's begin from the author's pen. In keeping with this episode's theme of finding beauty in the humble things, I'd like to share with you a reading from Work, A Story of Experience, from Chapter 8, A Cure for Despair. You can also find this passage in Louisa May Alcott, Illuminated by the Message, where I pair it up with a scripture verse. So I'll read that to you. And I used the subtitle, Cultivate Inner Beauty. Mrs. Wilkins glowed with pleasure at this compliment, and leaning toward Christy, looked into her face a moment in silence, as if to test the sincerity of the wish. In that moment, Christy saw what steady, sagacious eyes the woman had, so clear, so honest, that she looked through them into the great warm heart below, and looking, forgot the fuzzy red hair, the paucity of teeth, the faded gown, and felt only the attraction of a nature genuine and genial as the sunshine dancing on the kitchen floor. Beautiful souls often get put into plain bodies, but they cannot be hidden and have a power all their own, the greater for the unconsciousness or the humility which gives it grace. Christie saw and felt this then, and when the homely woman spoke, listened to her with implicit confidence. And from First Peter chapter 3, Cultivate inner beauty, the gentle, gracious kind that God delights in. The holy women of old were beautiful before God that way, and were good loyal wives to their husbands. Sarah, for instance, taking care of Abraham, would address him as my dear husband. You'll be true daughters of Sarah if you do the same, unanxious and unintimidated. And now, here's what's happening in the world of Alcott. as we speak is the annual Louisa May Alcott Summer Reading Challenge at the In the Bookcase blog run by Teresa. The challenge will take place through the entire month of June. Several readers have already posted their selections, including Joe's Boys, Little Women Next Door, a young adult novel by Sheila Solomon Class, Proverbs Stories, An Old Fashioned Girl, and March by Geraldine Brooks. As my research has me studying Bronson at the moment, I am reading Peddler's Progress by Odell Shepard. 
Come and join in the challenge. Teresa is giving away some special prizes that you won't want to miss. Visit inthebookcase.blogspot.com to sign up or visit the discussion group on Goodreads. Links will be in the show notes. Taking Place This Summer is a special Alcott exhibit in Walpole, New Hampshire, run by the Historical Society. The Alcotts lived in Walpole between 1855 and 1857. Ray Boaz of the Historical Society has published a wonderful booklet, which I will soon be featuring on the Louisa May Alcott is My Passion blog. Among the items on exhibit are playbills advertising the plays Louisa and Anna took part in and the piano loaned to the family by Dr. Henry Bellows, which is immortalized in Little Women's Beth Finds the Palace Beautiful. Further information can be found in the show notes. Finally, the Summer Conversational Series and Teacher Institute is taking place at Orchard House from July 10th through the 14th. Visit louisamayalcott.org for sign-up forms and details. If you have an event you'd like me to share on this podcast, simply email me at louisamayalcottismypassion at gmail.com or you can send me feedback using the Speak Pipe app. It will record your voice and send your message via email to me. It's quick, easy, and free to send your feedback. Just click on the Speak Pipe app on the Louisa May Alcott is My Passion Facebook page. You can also click on the green Start Recording link here in the show notes. I welcome all kinds of feedback. Ask questions, make comments, quote a passage, tell a joke, anything Alcott-related. I look forward to hearing from you. And now, let's talk with our special guest, Lise Adams, Education Director of Louisa May Alcott's Orchard House, about the Summer Conversational Series coming up next month. Lise, how are you today? Fine, thanks. It's great to have you on the program. Before we get into the Summer Conversational Series, there's a question I've always been dying to ask, and that is, what drew you to Louisa May Alcott in the first place, and how did you land your dream job at Orchard House? <laughs> Good question. Well, um, I've always had an interest in history, um, and when I was growing up, I, I wanted to be a, an historian, um, but I ended up going into theater arts and having professional uh, training in in theater rather than history, even though I was also taking in college um, anthropology classes and archaeology and, you know, still keeping a hand in history. Um, and I ended up doing graduate work in uh, museum studies at Tufts. And first got involved at Orchard House as a volunteer for the Christmas program. Um, and I, I just fell in love with Orchard House and uh, went on the staff as an educator and the rest is history. <laughs> wow. Um, so I, I, the first time I ever visited Orchard House, though, I was a tourist um, with a four-year-old and um, didn't even get to see the whole house that first visit because the four-year-old was a little little rambunctious. Um, but I vowed to go back and ended up going back for a living history program years later. Oh, and, wow. and that's how I, I got intrigued about the possibility of working there. Wow. That's fabulous. I know there's something about the place that just keeps drawing you back, drawing you back. It really is like a pilgrimage for a lot of people to go there. Right, and a lot of people come to it through the book Little Women mm -hmm. when they find out that the house really exists where the book was set and where the book was written. That's where we get all our pilgrims coming to see the house. Um, and, of course, one of the things that's most fascinating about it is the fact that we have so many things of the Alcotts there, which really makes you feel, when you're going through the house, um, that you're seeing how the Alcotts really lived in the house, and you have the feeling of the family in the house when you go in it. 
Yeah, it becomes a very personal experience when you see some of the artifacts, especially when you put out those special artifacts last fall that are not usually brought out. Those were amazing. And right now we have Anna Alcott's wedding gown out, which people don't get to see except in May and June Mm -hmm. each year is when we display that. Um, Her real wedding gown really gives you a connection with the family and the type of events that were celebrated there. Right, and especially where it was so vividly described in Little Women, it's really quite close to the original the original wedding. Right. Uh, when I first read Little Women, I read my grandmother's copy of the book, which is the 1880 uh, Frank Merrill illustrated oh, wow. book with the 200 illustrations. And so my vision of what that family was like, the March family from the book, mm-hmm. comes from those illustrations of Frank Merrill. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure um, each person has their own favorite copy of the book. I know you do, too, Susan. I have several, actually, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, um, the conversational series that will be taking place in July, and what dates is that going to be taking place? It starts on Sunday July 10th with an afternoon uh, panel discussion, and then it's every day through the 14th, so um, that's Thursday, July 14th. Okay, and we'll get into uh, in a few moments about how you, how people can sign up for that. Um, first, we need to tantalize them with it. Um, I, how did the whole Summer Conversational series come to be? Well, it's interesting. It's rooted in the time of the Alcotts. Bronson Alcott, who had a lifetime dream of running at some point a Concord Academy for adults, um, was the one who began the idea of having this school of philosophy in Concord. Um, So in 1879, he actually held the first session um, in the study at Orchard House, Um, and so many people attended that, that he was given um, some grant money from one of the attendees, Elizabeth Thompson of New York City, gave him $1,000 to build the Concord School of Philosophy, and that's how the actual school came into being. So by the next year, 1880, that building was built, and Bronson Alcott called it the Hillside Chapel, Uh and he started it as a five-week course of lectures, Um, began on July 15th, 1879, and it cost people $3 a week wow. to attend. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> yeah. So that's really how it began. Now, in more modern times, um, in the 1980s, they revived it as a weekly lecture series. And then in the late 1990s, um, we began holding it as a more concentrated series of lectures that held to a particular theme. So that's the first um, time that it really came back more um, in keeping with the way Bronson Alcott held it back in um, the 1880s. It's very attending. I've never attended all four days, but I have attended at least three. And every year that I come back, I feel like I'm coming back to an extended family. It's just a, a wonderful, accepting, stimulating, great group of people that all we all have the same thing in common. We love the Alcotts. We love the stimulating conversation. We don't always agree on everything, but, you know, the floor is open. And it's just a really great way to, you know, discuss in a deep way, you know, what the family was about, what the works were about. Um, Why don't you uh, let us know then what the theme is for this year? So uh, the theme is, or the title of the the series is Finding Beauty in the Humblest Things. 
Louisa May Alcott's Literary Vision. And that um, title comes from a, a quote by Louisa May Alcott, um, and actually from several quotes, um, because Alcott was very interested in, as the transcendentalists were, in finding beauty in not only nature, but in human nature. Mm -hmm. And um, the transcendentalists uh, believed that the spiritual is found in the mundane mm -hmm. and in worldly things, and Louisa May Alcott really believed in that too, and extolled human nature. She focused on the humble deeds of common folk as being beautiful things that not everyone sees or that um, these these people necessarily want to be praised for, mm -hmm. but they just do good deeds. She saw the greatness in humanity in small deeds that people do, and also beauty in, in very common things that we don't necessarily recognize as um, beauty. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's something that's very much speaks to people today and you know back in her time that was kind of a, a new concept actually but but now it's something that people can really relate to today and it's a wonderful way to to look at her writings and and to be able to see it from that perspective yes um and we have a, a lot of speakers who who will be speaking it's interesting when the theme went out um how many different um, viewpoints we had on what this could mean in terms of uh, both uh, Louisa's literary works and works of the time, mm -hmm. other writers as well. Oh, yes, yes. Who are some of the presenters going to be? So we have people coming from different countries uh, and all over the United States. We have a trio of uh, multicultural presenters on the Sunday panel, wow. which is a, um, a session that's in conjunction with the Thorough Gathering, an annual series that also happens in Concord in July. Mm -hmm. So we have um, Anne-Laure Francois coming from France. We have Ernesto Estrella coming from Spain, and Henrik Otterberg from Sweden, wow. all presenting on one day. And then we have author Gabrielle Donnelly later in the week. She's the author of uh, Little Women Letters. Mm -hmm. And we have Pulitzer Prize winner John Madison speaking on the Civil War and writers who were affected by the Civil War and wrote about it, including Louisa May Alcott mm -hmm. and Walt Whitman. And we have Kathleen Davis coming from California and many others. It's going to be a very, it's going to be a really wonderful time. Um, can you please let our listeners know how they can sign up for the program? Sure. They can easily sign up on the website, which is louisamayalcott.org, or if they don't like signing up online or don't have access to the Internet, they can always call. They can call 978-369-4118, extension 106, and they can sign up by phone, or they can download a registration form online and send it in, mail it in with a check. Is there a cutoff date for registration? There is not. We even take walk-ins on the day of. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, you can sign up for a single day or you can sign up for the whole week. That's awesome. And you also provide um, for a fee, a small fee, you provide lunch each day? Yes, so they can purchase lunch or they can bring their own lunches. Mm-hmm. Great. 
Well, Lise, thank you so much. This sounds wonderful. I know I can hardly wait to come. <laughs> I so look forward uh -oh. to it every year. And I, I thank you so much for sharing this wonderful information with our listeners. And, uh, you know, I hope that people will sign up and come. And I know we'll just have a wonderful time together. Well, thank you so much, Susan. And I hope to see you there. Oh, I'll be there. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. My thanks again to Lise Adams for an informative and fun interview. I can hardly wait for July to come, and I hope I will see many of you at the Conversational Series. You may recall at the beginning of the episode that I promised you a big surprise. Well, here it is. And now, a word from the old girl herself. Louisa May Alcott steps out of the past to speak with us. Well, now you can guess who I ran into recently. Why Louisa May Alcott? And in the guise of Jan Turnquist, Executive Director of Orchard House. Jan kindly allowed me to record her entire performance as Louisa at the Willows in nearby Westboro, Massachusetts. I'd also like to give a big shout-out to the Westboro Cable TV station for providing me with a top-notch recording device complete with body mic for Jan. Over the course of several months, we can now hear directly from Louisa. So here's what she had to say today. I didn't know so many people. Oh, my goodness, I'm to come up there. Oh. Well, for heaven's sake, oh, you're so kind. You know, the gentleman who took my carriage to the livery said that there was someone who wanted to meet me. And he thought that, that that person might have even heard of little women. But I didn't expect so many people. Ha have you all heard of my book, Little Women? Yes. And you're smiling. <laughs> now that is heartening to an authoress, I tell you. Do you know some people, not too many, but some have been rather upset about that book. They say... Little women, why that Josephine March is too independent, not proper. They don't know I modeled her upon myself, and I didn't make her half bad enough. But you know, I, I never thought I would write a book that was so much about my own life and, and my own family. But the heart of the story is true. And I never thought I'd write about us. I, I thought we were too odd and dull. Who'd want to read about my sisters? No, when I was young, I loved to make up fantastical stories. Nothing realistic at all. If you do know my book, Little Women, some of you might know that toward the beginning, the girls are putting on a play as a gift for Christmas. And Josephine is playing the role of Rodrigo for the bandit's bride. She has a fake mustache and a wooden sword and boots that steal the show. All of that is perfectly true. I played that part of Rodrigo. I made those boots from scraps of leather that a neighbor gave us, and I can tell you that those boots turned out particularly well. I don't know if any of you have ever tried making a little costume piece for some occasion, and sometimes it's very poor, and sometimes you surprise yourself. Well, that's the case with these boots. And I used to write character after character for our little home productions to go in those boots, <laughs> Rodrigo being one of them. But I never knew anyone who had a sword fight or, or, or had witches and poisons and cauldrons and such, but that, that was the, the joy of writing these, what I would call, blood and thunder tales. Well, I hope you enjoyed this premiere episode of Louisa May Alcott is My Passion, the podcast. I wish again to thank my guests, Lise Adams and Jan Turnquist, for their participation. Now, I'm looking for yours. Visit louisamayalcottismypassion.com. You'll see in the left sidebar a link to the Speak Pipe app where you can leave audio feedback. Just click on the green Start Recording button. Speak Pipe is also available on the Louisa May Alcott Is My Passion Facebook page in the left-hand column under Apps. Just click on the icon and leave your message. 
You can also send an email to Louisa May Alcott is my passion at gmail.com. I'll share all feedback on the next episode in July. Now, I need for you to do me a big favor. Tell everyone you know about this podcast. Share on social media. Tell your friends. Get the word out. Let's make a big splash with this thing. The podcast will soon be featured on iTunes, and I'll alert you on the blog and in future podcasts when that happens. It's really important that as many of you as possible visit iTunes and leave a review. Those reviews go a long way towards making the podcast visible on iTunes to new listeners. Subscribing to the podcast helps, too, and it also makes sure that you don't miss a single episode. Encourage your friends to subscribe, too. I look forward to seeing you next time on Louisa May Alcott is My Passion, the podcast. Don't forget to visit louisamayalcottismypassion.com for upcoming blog posts. In the meantime, remember what Joe March once said, quote, I want to do something splendid something heroic or wonderful that won't be forgotten after I'm dead. Go out today and do something splendid. Until next time, this is your host, Susan Bailey, bidding you a fond adieu.